Hello everyone and welcome to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. I'm Don Jacobs in the Pennsylvania Outdoor Life cabin and if you're an archery hunter you're excited. We're starting to hear more and more reports of deer chasing deer. We're seeing a lot of dead deer on the highway which means the rut is on. If you're going out good luck. Now's the time to be in the woods. Every now and then though we stumble upon a story and we stand back and say boy I didn't know that or I've never seen that before. That's what this story is about. Molly Giles is a biologist with the Pennsylvania Game Commission and she contacted us about sandhill cranes. We are looking at sandhill cranes, which is a unique bird for northeastern Pennsylvania or for Pennsylvania in general. Um, a lot of people just kind of confuse them with great blue herons, but they're different, whole different family of birds. Um, <coughs> One of the main things you can use to distinguish between a great blue heron and a sandhill crane is that uh, most herons, their neck is sinuous. If they fold it into an S, yeah. S shape, or they hold it in an S shape, um, even when they're flying in some cases, but sandhill cranes, their necks are straight, and when they fly, their necks are straight out. They don't fold them up at all. Now, are these young of the year? Are they adults? Tell me about that. So these three are adults, um, and that's because uh, they have that red on their faces. Okay. Um, the juveniles wouldn't have that, that red on them yet. Their head would just look gray. And a lot of times the juveniles would have sort of like a, a brownish or like a rusty colored uh, wash to them too. It wouldn't be as, as bright gray as these ones. So I, I lived here my whole life. I've been in every county in the state. <laughs> I've never seen them before. And I call you and, and like you say, yeah, they're, they're, they're showing up around here. They are, yeah. Um, so they're not, historically they were not really associated with Pennsylvania. Um, back in the 80s, we started to have um, people reporting them, uh, mainly up in the northwest part of the state, like Crawford and I think Lawrence County. Um, that's where we started having reports of them initially. Um, <clears throat> and then in, I think about 1993, they had the first confirmed nesting attempt wow. of them. That was again up in the northwest part of the state. Um, but since the 80s and early 90s, we've had them sort of spreading out across the state and showing up in higher numbers. Now, not all of those are, are breeding here. A lot of them are just uh, staging here for migration. It's going to take a while for Canada to thaw out so um, in those northern breeding grounds. So they, they all have to stage or stop somewhere until the weather up, up north is better. Um, so that pretty much that whole population stages in, uh, along the Platte River in Nebraska. And so when you have that many birds um, plus millions of geese and ducks and uh, other shorebirds and marsh birds and stuff like that all migrating through that same area. It's, it's like quite a thing to see for a, a person who you know, enjoys birding and stuff like that. Sure. Um, you can actually um, go to a, there's a place there where you can actually, um, they have little blinds built and you can uh, sign up to go on like a crane viewing oh, cool. thing. So you can sign up for like a blind um, and go sit in that blind either in the morning or the evening when the birds are leaving the roost or coming into the roost. Um, it's quite a spectacle. Those birds stage there. If these birds are here, where do you expect them to go when winter really sets in here in Pennsylvania? So most of these um, eastern population birds are going to go somewhere, um, sort you know, like like I talked about, Florida, okay. Georgia, um, down you know, southern east coast, or we do have those birds now kind of hanging out in areas of um, you know Kentucky and Tennessee and stuff like that. So it, it's going to depend kind of on the. The, win the, the winter they experience, I guess, how far south they go, and that with climate change, that may be the reason why we're seeing them wintering in different areas. We're seeing all kinds of birds doing that with climate change. So, um, but the majority of the birds from that eastern population are going to go somewhere in like the southeastern U.S. The pair that people have been seeing in this area, as well as some pairs in other counties in the area, could likely be the same pair every year. Pennsylvania, because we had started having more sightings of them. Um, Fish and Wildlife Service added us into their annual survey. 
Um, so there's, it's a fall survey, happens uh, at the end of October or early November every year. Um, and the point of the survey is for us to come out here um, to sites where we've seen them before, or maybe where somebody has reported them to us like throughout the year. Um, so we can go to those sites and, and use that information to get a count of what the numbers might be, and also like what that distribution is in the state. So, how, you know, where are they spreading out to from that original, those original sightings in the northwest part of the state. So we have, uh, mainly we see them now in the northwest still, uh, here in the northeast, and in um, the southeast as well. So like, I think Lancaster County is one of the popular ones. Um, but every year we kind of see them in more and more counties. Okay. Um, in 2019, we had our first count uh, for the fall survey that went over 200 birds. Wow. So we're above 200 birds now um, that are reported in the state every year. Um, and I believe last year we set the record for number of counties surveyed in the state. So that was pretty cool. And there's a large number of counties that we survey in northeastern Pennsylvania. We do Bradford, Sullivan, uh, like Columbia, Montour, Northumberland, uh, Lackawanna, Pike, and Wayne, wow. I think. So Much of my viewing area. Actually. <laughs> yep, yeah. it is. Yeah. So by the time this airs, the survey is going to be over. Mm -hmm. But people want more information about the Sandhill Crane, and maybe the survey next year mm -hmm. can help you out. Where, where can they find that? So it's all on our website. If you just go in, go on our website and in the search bar, type in Sandhill Crane, it should come up. Um, because this is actually a public survey. Um, you know, the biologists like myself and the game wardens come out to these spots where we have known um, locations, known sightings from year to year. We survey those. But um, during that survey period, which this year was October 24th, up until November 2nd, uh, any member of the public can submit data to Fish and Wildlife okay. Service during that survey. So all of that information is on our website. There's a, um, a page on there that will show you how to positively identify cranes versus some other herons and things like that, right. um, and how to identify um, the adults versus the juvenile birds. So it'll walk you through that whole process. So if you, you know, if you have ones that you're maybe seeing on your property or close by and you want to kind of add those into the survey. That's you cool. can go on the website and do it. Thank you, Molly. You were so knowledgeable about, about those big birds. And, the, and you know, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service next year is going to be doing the survey. If you see them, by all means, be part of that survey. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back.